two, one. All right, so first, we're gonna talk about permutation of n objects. However, with selection of r objects from those n under repetition. So you can see here an example, we have n, which is three, so there are three objects. In this case, they're, num they're digits. But we're not gonna be selecting all n of them to create our permutations. So we did that, okay, where we took n and then we wanted to permutate, okay, all of them. So we had that example already. And I did a video, I put up a link up above there. So that was the initial one. That's actually the easier case when that happens. So for instance, here we have three objects and we would have three factorial permutations in total, but we would have to divide by two factorial because of the fact that one of those objects is repeating two times. So that's in that video. You can go back there. Now I'm going to be interested in, okay, where we are now going to be selecting not n, but less than that n. So some r. So some r reserved objects or, or r selections. Okay, so for instance, what if we take all of these three and now we wanted to select only two of them? So is there an actual formula like we had in that previous video, kind of like this? Well, unfortunately, mm, not so much unless you can find it or I'm going to be trying to find it. Now, I'm going to dedicate this video actually to one of my favorite teachers and I talked to him about this. Um, we're super close friends now. So Marino, okay, Raka, this is dedicated to you, sir. Um, I hope I can bring you back at some point. I know you're retired, but I think you can do a lot of good um, for the math community and students, okay? Uh, thank you for everything you've done. So just saying that, and kind of like Marino mentioned to me when we spoke, um, so it would be consideration by cases. I was trying to cheat. I was trying to figure out if there is some formula, but we kind of do have to go through cases. So. Let's imagine that we have these three characters, but we wanted to only see how many two number permutations there would be. So I can do it by brute force and I'll do that again. So for instance, you know, I can say, all right, let this be my one and I'm going to call this one, 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 two, just to distinguish between them for now. Okay, so how many of twos would they have? Okay, two number permutations. Well, I would have either this or this. I would have, okay, this or this could have been another one. I could have this one or this one. I could have this or that. And then of course I can have two at the start so I would have something like this. But as you can see, there is a lot of repetitions here. And if I remove these so that there is no distinguishing between the first and the second one, then it's very clear that I can see that, okay, well, clearly has repeated here, right? And the same thing, okay, has happened that the one and two, one and two has repeated. And then of course, this can also happen with the two one and the two one. So how many different ones do I have? I actually have three total permutations. I have one one, I have one two and two one. And that is it. Now it would be super it would be super seductive to try to use this formula that worked. Remember, we said that if we were picking all of them, you know, it was n p n divided by how many were actually repeating. So we would have, okay, how many times did the first character repeat multiplied by, this was factorial, okay, 
all of these repetitions. Now, this was just simply n factorial. But wouldn't it be nice if we just kind of went like this? Well, I know that in total, okay, for instance, for this example, I'm really doing this, right? I could get these six by doing three P2. And now I would really want to do this. I would want to say, okay, well, let's divide this whole thing because the one is repeating two times. Can I not just do what I did before? And you would say, hmm, well, it kind of works. Three divided by two, I get three, which was my answer. And you might get fooled because unfortunately this is not, I wish it was, but it is not the actual formula, but you will find it on the internet. If you search around, somebody has made this mistake, I'm sure. Now, let me show you why this is a mistake if you were assuming this. So if we did, now instead of just repeating one, two times, what if we repeated it three times and we wanted to find out, okay, how many times or how many permutations, different permutations do I have if I still wanna pick two digit numbers? It turns out that if you added the one, you would still only have one, 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 two, and two, one. Those are the only ones. Doesn't matter what you do with those ones. So there's still only three different permutations in here. But if you tried the formula, for this, because the formula would be, I have now four different objects. I'm trying to pick two of them and I'm gonna be dividing by, so notice there's one of them that is repeating three times. So I would try to do something like this, but hold on a second. If you calculate this, so three, um, sorry, four P2, okay? If you do that calculations, which would have been four factorial divided by two factorial, which is just four times three, which is 12, divided by three factorial, which is six, this would have given you two. But hey, wait a minute, that's not what the answer is. So do not use this. In general, it does not necessarily work. So what will work then? Well, you're stuck. You kind of have to go in individual cases. So if I would take this, right, what we would do is, we would have a different set of cases where you would say, okay, so case number one, I'm going to have a case where I'm only going to consider how many different ways would I be able to permutate if it was only one digits? Clearly there's only one. There's only one way to do it. And that would be one, one. It doesn't matter how many different ways you order it. So I'm actually going to be doing the additive principle where I'm going to take each case at a time and then add them together. So that's that. Now, another case is, of course, what if you have just the ones, okay, and then the two that is added to them. So if we're going to be picking, now it doesn't actually matter, so it'll be just one and two, doesn't matter that there are three of them because they would yield to us exactly the same digit, okay, two digits. So the only way to have this is one, two, so that's one number, or two, one. So there's only two different ways. And from this, you know, because you're picking, so this is just two factorial, there's two ways of being able to order it, okay, so that's what we would have. And those are the two. So this would have been case number two. Now there are no actually other cases remaining here. Okay, I've exhausted my cases. I either utilize all the ones or utilize a one with a two and then I'm done. And notice this would have been, so two cases or two different permutations plus one permutation. So in total, I have three as we saw by brute force that we can do it as well. So when you do have, this is a very 
hard problem to do because you have to separate these now indeed into different cases that you would have. You know, there is, this is kind of going back, here's another example for you. What if, okay, so here's an example. You know, you would pick, um, let's say Canada, all right? Those would be, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So six different characters in here. And what if I wanted to see, say maybe, how many different permutations would I have, okay, of three letter characters? So that is now the question. So how would we set up our cases? Well, so I would actually order this. So my set, I would have said A, I have A, A, so this repeats, okay, this many times, and then I have my C, okay, my N, and then my D. So I'll just kind of separate it. So case one, so how I would set this up is I would say, all right, well, if I consider all the A's, so A, A, and A, well, this will only yield to me one permutation. It doesn't matter how I'm going to rearrange my A's, okay? Since they're all the same, that's what I would have. All right, so that's that. Now, okay, of course, so now case number two, because this is not going to be super easy, because I'm picking three different ones, you know, so what if I picked my A's? Now, so what if I picked my A's? And then I picked one of the other letters, so let's say C. In how many different ways would I be able to arrange this? Now, this is actually the same problem as I had above here, where I was picking a one, one, and a two. So now instead I'm saying A, A, and I think a C. So we know, so I did this by brute force, you know, we would have three different ways. And indeed, that would be the case, right? So if I did it by brute force, I could have A, A, C, which was one of them, A, C, A, which would be another one, and then C, A, A, okay? So that would be the only one. Now the A swapping do not really matter, okay? So within here, so this would have been three, okay? So out of those, so three additional ones. Now, okay, so there are other cases. Okay, so case number three. Now within, so if I go back to case number two, of course, so I only did it with C, but I also can also do it with N and also do it with D. So these three cases, right, with the C, so I had three, with the N, that's also three, and then with the D, that's also three, because there's three of them. So in total here, you know, those are nine different permutations where I can just swap those. So that exhausts with two A's and any other letter. Okay, so now what else remains? Well, what else remains? I can have an A, right? Okay, so where there's only one A allowed, okay, out of my three. And then I can pick, you know, C, N, or D. So what if I had this as my other case? Now, of course, I can remove this and I can say, you know, make it a little bit simpler on you. So make it that. And then ask you, okay, how many permutations there are? So this is simple. This is just simply three factorial, right? That's what we would have there. So it would be six. Or you know, and you can use what you already know. You can say, well, I have four distinct ones, four distinct ones, but I'm only gonna choose three of them at a time. And this will tell you how many permutations all of these letters can have. And that would be actually it. Now you've exhausted kind of all the cases that you had. And now you might say, wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it is a lot of work. But with repetitions, there isn't an actual pure out formula that we may have. We have to use additive principle and then add up the cases. And then maybe, you know, one of you or who knows, by a miracle, maybe me, 
I can figure out maybe some general formula, but I doubt that there is one. If there is some and you're watching this, please put it up in the show notes, share it. I'm sure people will appreciate that. All right, so now just to finish this off, so this is what, four factorial and then four minus three, so that's one factorial. So this is four times three times two times one, which I guess is uh, 24. So we have 24 different ones plus the nine and then plus the one, you can add them all up and then you'll have your result. All right, so that is the example. And unfortunately, indeed, you would have to do a little bit of work and start separating things up and then add them together. Thanks for watching, okay? Ciao, everybody.